And that is uh, Brett St. Clair, who is the CEO and co-founder at TerraFlow AI. And he's going to be talking to us about accelerating future uh, digital transformation initiatives for customer experience success. Uh, Brett, over to you. Thank you very much, Nastasia. Well, everybody, I so miss all of you sitting in front of me as a camera and a couple of lights. I miss engaging with you guys and getting to really feel the amount of excitement and the enjoyment of all my bad jokes. Because there will be plenty in this session, I promise. The only people who get to listen to my bad jokes now are my kids, and they've labeled every joke a dad joke. So I've got 15 minutes to share some insight with you guys, and I'm incredibly excited about it. So let's get into it, guys. Um, I trust you all have your coffees, or if you were anything like me, I'd be raiding my lockdown supply right now, because no one else is checking. Crack open a uh, 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 still water, of course. Yes, yes, it's still water, yes. Um, but in the meantime, I want to share some thoughts with you guys. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's been saying post-COVID, post-COVID, post-COVID. Sadly, we are no longer or nowhere near post-COVID. So really, let's get on with life and start thinking about how we're going to change the world. We've learned so much in this digital space. It feels like everyone is an expert, and that's what I love to hear, because it was only about three, four years ago that no one was really talking about the importance of digitalizing one's business. Yet, it is incredibly important. So I'm going to give you a couple of steps. I want to talk through what does it take to actually figure out how you will use this ability to transform your business, why it's so important, what are the key roles that you're going to do, and some tips on how you change your customer's experience. Trust me, it should be fun. Now, if you have any questions, if you have any chirps, and you know what I love most, if you think I'm funny, give me a clap, give me a boost in the chat box. Um, it's my only kind of reach out to you guys. Um, Yes, thank you. Look at that. Lots of uh, happy signs. I really hope that continues. I feel like one of those Instagram people all of a sudden. <laughs> Very fancy. Just kidding. So let's get into it. Um, I'm fascinated about how the, uh, uh, we're in this information enabled economy. And, and, and what does that actually mean? Because most of us have always dealt with information or data. And, and we, we, we're kind of trying to understand why it's having so much impact on our economies at the moment. And what I wanted to do is just dig into that thought process. What does it mean to be an information-enabled economy? And really, the reason why it's here is because we've had a bunch of these exponential technology waves, things like cloud, things like mobile, internet, faster internet. Wait, wait, no, fast internet. If anyone's with AfriHost, you might have got your message, especially if you like me on 200 megs, you're getting upgraded to one gig. That was just to make you guys jealous. Um, and, and hopefully this HD is coming out crisp and clean because of this one gig. But all these waves of technology that are rolling through are creating this faster and faster evolution in this world of data. So what is it actually doing? And for me, what it's showing us is that any industry, whether it's a digital business, whether it's a business that's trading in something physical, are going to see the impact of reaching towards zero marginal cost. So that's essentially where the cost of producing, the cost of delivering content or service or electricity or whatever you want to is getting so optimized that you're going to get to a point where it's almost zero. And what that means is it doesn't really change your business model. It changes the problem. It shifts the problem space. So my best example is really photographs, right? Anyone remember what it was like? By the way, I'm uh, moving house at the moment. So I came across a bunch of photos, uh, a bunch Damn, even though it was in the non-digital age, I must have taken about 20,000 photos. It took forever to go through, but it was reminiscing. And I'm clicking through these photos and I kept on seeing this, this packaging from, I think it was Jessup's. I lived in the UK at the time. And I remember how fancy they were. They had solved a problem of waiting for your photos to be developed. They had gone from one week to 24 hours. That was incredible. 
I think it was 2000, 2001, I couldn't believe that you could get your, your, your photos developed in that amount of time. Technology is incredible. So it shifted a bit. Now, think of it now. Now, photos are an instant. We're generating not tens of thousands, but millions of photos. And so the challenge now is to try figure out how do you find, how do you discover these amazing memories? Because last night, or I think it was the night before, I had a big box of memories, and I flicked through it, and I just shared it with people. Um, gave it to my family. It was really easy. So the problem space has shifted. It used to cost money to generate these photos. Now, you're getting it all for free. And we're also posting it everywhere. So the problem space shifts because the cost is reaching a point of zero. And it's happening everywhere. Now, my favorite example of this, of course, has got to be in electricity. We live in South Africa. I can hear the hum of my generator. <sighs> beautiful. I wouldn't swap it for an inverter any day. That beautiful, you know, burning fossil fuel. <sighs> Horrible thought, isn't it? But let's look at what the price per light used to cost. And so the old days, 1300s, can you believe it? We were able to calculate the cost per hour to light up a globe. And it was cheap. It was the equivalent of 40,000 pounds per hour. And you can imagine the naysayers, you know, and holding their candles. This will never happen. You know, you know those naysayers, those people in your organization that go, yeah, but... I'm sure some of you in this room call yourselves out and call everyone out that says, yeah, but, because those are the naysayers. And you can't blame them, right? This is the 1300s going, yeah, but, you know, to light up a light bulb is uh, from the equivalent of 40,000 um, pounds. I'd rather just light a candlestick and I'll light many of them. How is this going to evolve? But I want you to take note on the shape of the graph. You know, over time, technology accelerates, accelerates. We innovate, we, we invent new things. And it gets to a point where it just collapses. Right now, I'm surrounded by lights everywhere. I reckon in the same amount of time I'm presenting to you, these lights probably cost me a couple of cents, South African cents. So it reaches a point of zero marginal cost. The same thing is happening in the world of solar. So solar, which was generating our power now to see those globes light up, it's also getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and to the point where it's actually cheaper than natural gas or coal. In fact, my favorite example, again, is Eskom. Thank you, Eskom. Um, 2016, it was 50 cents per kilowatt. But in 2018, it's 1 round 92. And 2021 is 15% plus 15% plus 15% plus 15% plus 15%. Plus 15, plus 15, plus 15%. It's ridiculous. While wow, solar has been absolutely plummeting, and now we need to factor in the cost of storage. So even physical things like electricity are seeing the power of these innovation waves. It is incredible. So innovation, guys. Innovation is really about building on what the inventor did. So picture what was invented, really difficult to do to innovate. But what moves those curves, what takes you to the point of zero marginal cost is being an innovator. Do it simpler. Do it cheaper. That's what innovation is about. So that's what I want to talk to you a bit about today. How do you innovate? Um, uh, just a quick poll if anyone wants to jump in here and give me a quick message. Um, give me an idea who this gentleman is. What is he famous for in the world of invention? You know, he's a very famous individual. Um, I know some of you are going to Google this. I just know it. I know it. So let's see if anyone can actually give me what this individual invented. I mean, he's famous, right? I thought he was a South African. I really, truly did until I did my research and turns out he's Zimbabwean. Anyone? Anyone? Mm, difficult, right? Because invention is difficult. And invention is so difficult that very few people become famous because of it. So Ferdinand, you know what he invented? Was the creepy crawly. woo hoo hoo well done, Ferdinand, right? In every single pool in the world, and no one knows what his name is. So don't be like an inventor is a key message that I have for you. It's too difficult. What I want you to focus on to improve the custom experience and accelerate this transformation is really four things, four small things. Simplicity, friction, speed, and data.
Those are the most important things that you need to focus on. And we'll go into a little bit of detail here. I usually pick three, but four seemed a bit more relevant because I only have 15 minutes. So why not add an extra reason? So first of all, you've seen it in all your businesses, right? What do we do with our customer experience? Whether it's in the call center, whether it's in onboarding, whether it's in solving a problem, we go, well, I'm on SAP and I'm using form and I use paper and I'm just going to replicate what I computerized and I'm going to make it your problem. And my favorite example is using that amazing online system um, to apply for an ID. It's so exposing the complexity They've literally just taken the form and replicated it as a PDF that's in, you know, that you can enter and make changes to, and, and, and it takes you through the same process. So all we do in South Africa when it comes to digital transformation is we try to just expose what we already have, just digitize that, do exactly what we did in the early 2000s of computerizing our process. Let's just digitize. Wrong. Simplify. Simplify the process. It's really important that you do that. The next one is automate the way you work. Every time you see yourself doing something twice, I urge you to go and automate the way you work. It is vital. Go and automate it. And I always look at the way of working. We always think of agile. Here, it is about automating the process. Next up, understand what data counts. Guys, I think when we look at innovation, when we look at digital, when we look at the customer experience, if you're, say, selling a product and it's online, are you looking at the micro yeses, the micro yeses that build up trust? Are you measuring those yeses to the point of a sale or a conversion? Because if you're not, you're not using it in the right way. So data counts, but use it correctly. The world is entering this phase where everything is AI. My favorite example, and I love this because I bought it in London and I rushed home and I couldn't find a place to put it because you cannot put this device in your bedroom. My bedroom's way too quiet. So um, I put it in the kitchen and my wife loved it to the point where she was on Facebook. She was telling Google, please play me Kylie Minogue. And she was going on about how amazing this device was and she loved it. She loved it so much because it was the only device or thing in the house that listened to her. But AI is there, and AI is starting to change the way that we engage digitally through voice, through conversational UI. It is seriously changing the world. And what are you doing to adopt it? Now, the problem is this requires untapped, unlimited access to compute. And I've been saying this for years, and we still go on how important it is to have compute on site. If you are a CIO or someone who's building infrastructure, Come on, just use the cloud. Just put it up there. I'm starting to see banks that take as long to provision VMs in the cloud as they do on site. It's hilarious. We're overcomplexing the problem. So guys, everything is going in the cloud. You cannot fight it and you need the scale. So don't think you can build it. It's not like, you know, 10 years ago, oh, I'll build my own network and I'll build my own servers. Oh, aren't I so clever? The scale that this is happening, hundreds of thousands of users and developers building this technology in open source as well for free. So I can't stress it more. Take those four points. Simplicity. Automate. So, uh, uh, data. AI and cloud. I think I threw in an extra one there for you. So do it now, guys. I can't stress it. Have a wonderful day. And I really hope you enjoyed that beer. Thank you very much, everybody.